Well, good afternoon, everybody. As we are gathering up for midday prayer, I'll give people an opportunity to get signed on on this chilly day. If you've not looked at the weather report for the next few days, it's supposed to be cold, uh, particularly over the weekend. Uh, but that's uh, hopefully it won't be icy. I hope that uh, your Christmas and Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are safe uh, or, or days where you can travel safely and those kind of things. So. Uh, but as we're gathering up for our midday prayer time, let me know you're here. Uh, hi, Lynn. I see. Yeah, happy first day of winter. And <laughs> if you had a question about whether it's the first day of winter, just step outside for a few minutes. It feels pretty wintry to me. Um, and um, good to see you, Lynn. We'll um, get started in just a second with our prayer time. Um, if you want to add anyone to our prayers, please uh, uh, put their names in the comments, uh, and I'll be glad to add them um, when we get to that time in our uh, time together. So uh, let's see. We got folks online with this. Looks good. So we will get started as we center ourselves and we breathe in the breath of God and breathe out our cares and our concerns. And we breathe in the love of God and we breathe out our doubts and our despairs and we breathe in the life of God. And we breathe out our fears and our frustrations. Well, for today's reading today, I, um, I'm going to read um, a passage from uh, Luke. Uh, it's Mary's uh, song, Mary's Magnificat. Uh, just a little um, background. Um, uh, the angel Gabriel has told Mary that she um, will bear uh, God's son. Uh, she visits her... Um, her um, cousin Elizabeth, um, and um, and they they have an exchange, and then Mary sings this song, which I want to I want us to pay attention to the words kind of slowly at this point, uh, because uh, we tend to I think sentimentalize these words, but they're pretty radical words coming from a young, unwed, pregnant girl. Um, who proclaims God's gospel uh, in these songs. And it's an earth-shattering gospel. So hear Mary's words. Uh, and uh, then I got a little bit of a reflection, and then we'll um, hear from our friends in Camp Hill sing, and then we'll get together and pray. So here's Mary's song. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliest of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. So that's from Luke chapter uh, 1, uh, verses uh, 47 through 55. So Luke chapter 1, verses 47 through 55. And uh, when sung, this can be a pretty song. Uh, when you spend some time listening to, truly listening to Mary's words, um, it's a pretty radical proclamation um, because it talks about God's um, coming among um, God's people in a, in a shocking way, in a way in which... Um, the, the rest of the world would look at and, and not really even recognize, perhaps, um, because it is, it is a proclamation that God is there to, um, to come among those that the world sees as lowly, those that the world probably has cast aside, those that the world has given up on even, uh, and that God will not only come among them, but that God will raise them up. God will love them. God will walk with them. God will lift them out of what holds them in bondage and release them and free them. And I think 
we need to remember that that's the promise. And see, it's a promise that Mary goes all the way back through all of her ancestors and said, that really and truly, this is the, the fruition of or the continuance of uh, God's work already in the world, the way that God had already, always been working. And that is God's faithfulness that um, gives life to those words. Uh, so um, I think that's, I think we need to ponder those words um, for a while. A little bit later in the birth narrative, uh, uh, Mary will ponder words in her heart, or ponder all these things in her heart. But I think we all need to spend some time over the next several days. This is the shortest day of the year. So in the in the twilight, let's think about all that God has promised to do that Mary tells us about and how we see that uh, being enacted in our world today and how we might be a part of enacting God's God's will and God's work in our world today. So our friends are going to sit from Camp Hill are going to sing uh, a hymn that um, uh, Christmas Carol that a lot of folks like. Um, I, I kind of I'll be honest, I have ambivalent feelings about it sometimes because I think, and I think I have ambivalent feelings because if you just, if you don't pay attention to what Mary's words were in the front end that I just read, then you think that um, it's it's kind of it's kind of a sentimentalized um, uh, song. But if you if you have Mary's words in the background, um, I'm not sure that any of us know what have really know, and, and by know I mean ex know from an experience and know deeply um, just how radical God's love is for us. Uh, we, we may only know that when we get to those parts where the world tells us that we're not loved. So we're going to hear them sing, Mary, Did You Know? Uh, I know it's a lot of people's favorite, uh, one of their favorite hymns or Christmas carols. We'll hear them sing and then we'll get back to together to pray. If you uh, have someone you'd like to have named in our prayer time, please put their names in the comments. I'll be glad to include them as well. So here are our friends from Camp Hill.
And now, as God's people call together, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your coming among us in Jesus the Christ. It is a gift that is beyond our comprehension. It's a gift of love that is beyond our comprehension. It is a gift that heals beyond our comprehension. It is only actually through the working of your spirit that we might even come close to recognizing just how, how far you will go to ensure that we are your people forever, that there is nothing in this entire world that can ever separate us. And that's good news that we need to hear on this day and on every day. We ask God that you continue to walk with all of those who are suffering uh, in any way medically. We've got a long list of names, so hear those names as well as those that we will name aloud or silently in our hearts. So we pray for Sandra and Will and Zach and Colin, for Jim, for Anita and Sherry, for Laura and Terry and Ben, Howard, Rebecca, Glenn, Jane, Lauren, Sabrina, Mia and family, Trent, Donna, Dave and Nancy, Lynn, Jared and Samantha, Linda, Peggy, Judy, Ebony, Ruby, Megan, Katie, Karen, Tracy, Paul, and Dawn, and all of those that we name aloud are silently in our hearts at this time. Surround them with your healing presence. Enfold them in your loving embrace. Bring life to them. And we give you thanks to God for the gift of this time that we carve out a couple of days a week where we can gather together online um, in real time or in other times. That we can just take a break from all that wants to get in the way of our communion with you and that we can actually commune with those um, you've called together as well as with you. We can be reminded of your great love for us. As we head into the last few days before Christmas, um, help us to ponder Mary's words, reread those words, and commit to living into those words as best that we actually can through the power of your Holy Spirit. And now, God, as your people call together, we um, pray the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now as God's people as we wrap up our time, we breathe in the breath of God and we breathe out our tension and our turmoil. We breathe in the love of God and we breathe out our haste and our apprehensions. And we breathe in the life of God and we breathe out our work and our worry. So enjoy the rest of this day. I hope to see you either on site or online for our final midweek uh, Advent um, uh, worship service at 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, it's going to on site here in the worship center or online via uh, Facebook and YouTube channels. Um, we're going to um, experience or practice uh, um, rejoicing tonight um, as we rejoice in God's holy disruption. Um, and then uh, I'll see you again on Friday for midday prayer. Uh, and then hopefully uh, also we'll see you uh, on uh, Saturday at 4, 6, and 8 for um, our uh, Christmas Eve worship services. So until then, the Lord bless you and keep you.
The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.